up to a, a slot of smooth sandstone that if you touched it, it just felt like velvet. And above that, a twisting funnel where the light came down first kind of yellow, then kind of dimmer and dimmer and then kind of orange. An exquisite place, just about as beautiful as anything <laughs> the creator ever dreamed up. Powell had been the first outsider to see Glen Canyon and these dozens of side canyons. Brower would be one of the last. And at Glen Canyon, this was a critical time. And I recall the decision I had to make uh, whether we could close the gates uh, that year or have to wait another year. I'd seen the canyon. I'd seen the side canyons. My family had seen them. I knew what a beautiful place it was. I testified in the lack of comprehensive thinking that had gone under the entire project and came up with very strong arguments for stopping the entire project. And I wanted, at least at the last moment, to appeal to Stuart Udall, and I wanted to get in t to talk to him, because that was the last day they were going to close the gates and start filling Glen Canyon, and I got to his office, but never got to see him because he, he had this other agenda. Of course, all the upper basin states people and politicians were saying, close the gates, close the gates. And all the downstream people who, who relied on the water coming on through, uh, don't close the gates, don't close the gates. I, I did have this last desperate hope that we could stay the closing of the dam, the closing of the river valves, and stop any further filling until we'd thought a little bit harder about the alternatives. And that January of 63, I failed. So Ben Canyon started filling. We finally got an estimate that indicated and that we would get up to power plant intake levels by the end of July. And so I made the recommendation that we close the gates and start filling. But I was the one person who was in position to stop it before they had built the dam. And there's where my big failure was. We had the arguments. We had the votes. And for reasons that I still do not understand, I didn't do what I should have done. I just sat there. And I didn't act. And as our plane glided down into this immense canyon landscape, I could see from afar this plug in the river, the place where Glen Canyon Dam stands. As I look around at this incredibly beautiful and creative work, it occurs to me that this is a new kind of writing on the wall. A kind that says proudly and beautifully, man was here. We're looking down 583 feet or 175 meters. Goodbye, hat. The reservoir was christened 100 years to the day after Powell passed through Glen Canyon. Glen Canyon Dam was built to generate hydropower for homes, industry, and air conditioning in Phoenix, and to power pumps which lift the Colorado 300 miles uphill to new farms and towns in Arizona. Today, four million people a year visit Glen Canyon Dam and its lake. But I felt from the very start that it should be Lake Powell because Powell was the man who had made the canyon famous. He was the man who was really the father of the Bureau of Reclamation. He was the one who made the reports to Congress that indicated that uh, the West could never be developed by private enterprise alone, and it would take the power and muscle of the federal government to develop and settle the West properly. So I thought Lake Powell was the proper name for that reservoir. One of the most outrageous things that ever happened was to name the reservoir, the flat water, behind Glen Canyon Dam after John Wesley Powell, a reservoir that flooded some of the things that he thought were the most beautiful he had ever seen. And I'm sure that if he were around, he would be after the person who thought of that idea, and he'd say, you can't do that. Maybe Dominique's flat water or something of the sort, but not Lake Powell. When you dam a river, you always lose something. You can't provide something for somebody else and not have somebody in the middle get upset. Senator Goldwater had been a strong advocate for Glen Canyon Dam. It's, a, I guess, probably one of the most beautiful reservoirs in the world. 
And as you ride on it, you can see things you could not have seen in the river, but I just soon never see them. Well, I went into a canyon on the left bank and I wound around and I came across a, a very narrow place where I could just barely get my boat through. And I looked back down and the sun at that particular moment had come down just like a beam, right smack down into the water. And what it showed me was that spiral that I had looked up at. There are 2,000 Anasazi sites uh, buried in the water now, uh, but they decided the practical advantage was that would outweigh that. This was a controversial dam. It kicked off the environmentalist movement in the United States uh, because a handful of people had taken the trouble to find out what an exquisite little canyon this was. Six hundred feet below the surface of Lake Powell. I have to be honest with you. I'd I'd been happier if we didn't have the lake. It, Glen Canyon was a beautiful piece of water. If you had to vote today on damming Glen Canyon, would you I, vote? To I'd vote against it because I have uh, I've become convinced that. Uh, well, water is important, particularly those of us who live in the desert. It's not all that important. Eight million years of geologic change came to a sudden end. Environmental havoc swiftly took hold downstream. For years, the Colorado had run 85 degrees and rich with silt. Now, from the deep reservoir, it runs freezing cold and crystal clear. Most of the native fish, which had evolved over a million years in the warm, silty water, vanished into extinction. Lake Powell evaporates 10 feet a year, twice what the city of Los Angeles uses in a year. The violent natural floods which redistributed river sand were replaced by a regulated daily tide governed not by the rain, but by electric power demand in Phoenix. Would you believe a fish story in which a transport plane is loaded with 400,000 rainbow trout in order to stock a remote lake in Arizona? At a carefully chosen altitude, 650 feet, the adult trout are ready to drop in to their new home. Knocked out briefly, 95% of them survive. These flying fish may be the first successful piscatorial airdrop. I had no sympathy for those who, who felt that nature couldn't be improved upon. Now, I admit that nature can improve upon man. We're, we're, we're probably the supreme being, but uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the realm of rivers, uh, I think man can improve upon them. We're not trying to recreate what was here before the dam. That's kind of, I mean, that's almost impossible to do but still trying to protect the endangered species and the culture. Forty years ago, there were no studies of the environmental change Glen Canyon Dam was set in motion. National environmental laws did not exist. Now, a bureau team studies those changes in the river system. Powell's men found the ancient river half a mile wide at its mouth, pouring into the ocean. By 1967, Hoover Dam, Glen Canyon, and eight other dams stopped the river in a chain of giant reservoirs. Except in very wet years, the Colorado River no longer reaches the sea. The remains of the river vanish into the sand in northern Mexico. Many, many people have had lives and livelihoods. Cities have been built and huge amounts of food produced that just would never have happened without these reclamation projects. And I don't think anyone can truly logically sit down and say in the grand scope of everything in context that that was an evil thing to do. That's 